Hi, and welcome to my YouTube channel. This is uh, Professor Chuck Wood from Duquesne University. Today we're going to be talking about the questions you might run into when you're interviewing for that security position when it comes to this physical network and how do you secure it. Okay, this is uh, somewhat technical, and I do recommend that you get a book and read about it if you have no clue what I'm talking about. But uh, uh, let's go into these questions. The first is, what is defense in depth and how is it used? You could argue that defense in depth could be applicable to almost any security area. The concept is that you cannot secure any organization at one point, that you have to secure it at several points. Okay, so defense in depth really works well in the concept of networking because the network has several points that have uh, areas of weakness and you have to secure all those points, not one of them, not choosing which one you think you want to secure the most, all those points to make a truly secure system. Okay, and with that in mind, what is the OSI model? Okay, now, when we talk about OSI, we're talking about when data is sent over the wire, how does that happen? And the way that happens is it's chopped up into little tiny packets of data. And at the front and end of each packet, header information is put in there, including header information at at uh, uh, where it's going, where it's coming from. But there are seven layers of OSI where headers are added to, to the uh, packet as it moves up and down the OSI layer. Uh, we can go into those application, uh, uh, presentation, session, transport, network, uh, data link, and, and, and uh, uh, physical. Uh, but those are the layers. There are mnemonics uh, that you can use that uh, um, uh, any person studying this needs severe psychotherapy. This first letters match up to the layers of the OSI. So there are a lot of mnemonics you can use for this. But uh, the, the, um, uh, what you want to take away from this is that each one of those layers, the application layer where the application is running, the presentation layer where it's, the data is moving and, and uh, what, what the programs are running uh, uh, presenting the data are uh, are secured. The session layer, what information are, is the uh, application storing on your computer about you to uh, uh, provide later to the networking the application? How do we secure the session? Then how do you, how do we secure the transport when we're actually in, in our information about your computer, where it's coming from, where it's going to, and you know, and so on and so on. So the OSI is a good way to break down the, the uh, uh, transmission into seven different areas and secure each one of those seven areas. And once you do that, you should have a pretty secure system, remembering that the hacker has to get through seven stops, not just one. Okay, now um, the next question are, what are tunneling protocols? Okay, a pro tunneling protocol is a protocol that can run over a network on a system that is not designed to run that because it is put inside a tunnel and the tunnel itself runs the application. A lot of times uh, 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 applications are secured by a layer of encryption that the host computer is not even aware of or doesn't run. The tunnel runs the encryption. Uh, a good example of this is, is um, a VPN, virtual public networks, the virtual private networks, the, the uh, 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 tunneling protocol goes set gets set up on the uh, host and remote computers, and information is set back and forth with the computer not actually both computers not actually able to even get to the data that is being sent um, because of the encryption. So it's like a tunnel of encryption that things go through, and uh, 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 that's it's called it's called a tunneling protocol. It's kind of hard to envision, but basically it means that your have a, usually a layer of encryption surrounding your data path, and the data goes through this layer of encryption, and no one can get to your data. Okay, so that's what a tunneling protocol is. Okay, what describe the two types of intrusion detection and prevention systems, or IDPSs. Sometimes they're called intrusion detection systems and intrusion prevention systems, and sometimes they're thrown together, IDPS or IDS or IES. Okay, but I'll call it IDPS. Okay, there's two types of this. The first type is called a network-based IDPS. The network-based sits on the network and runs very passively, uh, just 
it's sniffing the network, if you will. When data runs over it, no one knows it's there. It's, it makes a copy of the data and analyzes the data. It analyzes where the data came from, where the data is going to, uh, uh, how much of the data is being sent, and 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 it tries to see if anything triggers something that's abnormal. If all of a sudden you're getting data from uh, uh, Uzbekistan, why are you getting data from that? And should you shut it down? If all of a sudden you start sending uh, uh, 25 megs of data, you know, to somewhere in Peru, why are you sending data just to Peru and that much data to Peru? Uh, so the network base looks at that, but it can't look at the actual data. For that, you need a server-based IDPS. So the server base runs at the server level and, and analyzes what is stored on the server, the programs that are running on the server. And, uh, and, and sees if there's anything that's weird, the, the, the file sizes, the timestamps, to see if anything's changed using what's called a checksum. Um, so so uh, uh, you need both of them on a truly secure system, but, uh, uh, and both have their benefits and both have their weaknesses. Together, they're, they're pretty strong together. Okay, and then um, finally, name the four different types of firewalls and how they interact with the OSI. Okay. Application gateways is the first time, and what that run that what that does is it doesn't let things run on your system uh, uh, over another system at the application presentation or session layers. Okay, so the first three layers. Okay, the next type is a circuit gateway. And the circuit gateway uh, makes sure that your circuit is secure, and that if something weird happens over a circuit, the firewall stops it. This is at the transport layer of the OSI. Okay, and then. What uh, the next one is the uh, packet filtering uh, uh, firewall. The packet filtering looks at the packets to see if there's any type of pattern of bits and bytes that uh, uh, trigger a, an alarm. So a lot of attacks have a certain pattern that they go through. If that pattern is detected, uh, at the, it's usually done at the transport layer before it gets to your computers and the firewall stops it. And then finally, the MAC layer firewalls uh, work at the data link and physical layers to say, what computer are you trying to get to? And why is that computer, say, in the clerical office or the payroll office or the accounting office, why is that computer accessing your page, another website, things like that? And so uh, a lot of times firewalls use a hybrid of these four types as well. So there might be a fifth type, the hybrid type, where uh, one or more of the types are combined together. Okay, and that's it for me to, for, for this interview session. Uh, thank you for checking out my site. Don't forget to check out my books and hit the subscribe button at the bottom. Uh, also, the, the Amazon link to my uh, books is also at the bottom. Uh, don't for, also forget that uh, uh, keep checking out our site. We will come out with more books on security uh, that describe each one of the 10 domains of the CISSP. Thank you very much.